Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Yeah, we're getting there. Eventually, you'll be doing it. You gotta bob your head right. Do this. Now, oh, do this with your mouth. Go like that. All right, we can't do that the whole time, man. People are gonna turn us off. All right, so today's video is for Kendra. Hey, uh, Alex. Kendra has a son named Alex. You want to tell Alex that Alex said hi? Tell Alex that I said hi. All right, there we go. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, Neo Caradina shrimp, and we're just going to dive right into it. Bam! I'm putting up this chart behind me. Okay? So these are all Neo Caradinas. So let's talk about their breeding, and then I'll tell you about the parameters. Now, breeding them, what color scheme do Neos breed by? Right, monochromatic. A monochromatic color scheme is all the colors that come from a single base hue and then are extended outwards using different shades and tones. Okay, so I'm going to make it even easier because here's me pointing out the shrimp. Essentially, you want different types of green? Do green. You want different types of blue? Do blue. You want different types of red? Do red. And you'll see them all grouped where they are together. All right, now for me, I went with the blue because it had such a dramatic change in color, black to blue, I felt anyway. But uh, so what, what kind of uh, blues and blacks did we get out of that? We, we started off with what? It was uh, blue, dreams. blue dreams and we crossed them with um, black reallys. Black that's right. What's a really? Um, a really is a type of shrimp that has a clear spot on them. That's right, they'll have a clear spot wrapped around their belly. So keep that in mind with any shrimp that you breed. You will eventually, you'll start getting that type of stuff out. We got striped ones that are like tiger stripe. There's actually a chart for blue tigers. Uh, we got some that are blue, black stripes, vice versa. Blue head, black body, black head, blue body. The, and there's names for all these. Uh, carbon release, blue release, black release. Um, we got straight, dark, uh, blue diamonds, uh, blue jellies. The list goes on. That's why I went with that whole blue area because it just, it has a massive uh, zone in there too. And it's the only one besides this one oddball, you'll see there's a one that's red with the blue body. I'm not even going to get into how they did that because you're going to be even more confused if you can't just grasp, stick within the color. And that one is goes against that rule, but... Anyway, we won't talk about that. Trust me. It's already stressing me out. Uh, so, parameters. I never had the success I wanted with my shrimp doing them with fish. It does seem awesome. Right, Alex? Just having like a bunch of different colored shrimp in with your fish. It won't work out for you for two reasons. One, when you do a skill tank, boom, like looks like this. Everyone wants one. I, don't know, I did too. I was like, I want all the colors and thousands of them. Well, eventually you end up with brown shrimp, because that's just what happens. You start mixing colors, they go back to the wild form, which is brown. And not only that, you just won't have a colony, regardless. With any kind of fish you put them with, you may have babies here and there, but you don't even realize that you're losing potentially 40 shrimp a month or, or more. That And you can have hundreds in a 10-gallon. I think we lose count after about 50 in my tank. It's just impossible. And then we notice little specks like the newborns are so tiny even a, their food to minnow they they will they will survive some but they will not thrive with fish they just won't they're they're um they're literally smaller than a grain of rice yeah, yeah smaller than that i mean yeah it, it takes a second to even realize yeah. oh that's a shrimp that's what i'm looking at yeah you think it's you want to like scratch that. the glass at first second there's like something on it but yeah there is something on it on the inside babies and then you'll see them everywhere. They'll all be grouped in the one area. They love to eat biofilm. They're too small for the shrimp food, so they eat the microalgae tidbits until they get bigger. And they can't do that with fish. They're too scared. They'll never come out to do that because there's constant, to them, sharks swimming around. And even their baby fish will eat their shrimp. It's just, just don't do it. You, you'll love your tank being just a shrimp tank, I promise. Um, and... We were going to do a bit. He fed them. Man, they, feeding day, that's a treat. Um, I, we have a couple hundred now, but we dump a little handful in there, and all the, they come crawling around, and 
it just looks more spectacular when you have a tank that's overrun with shrimp as a you know opposed to shrimp and trying to pull off shrimp in there now parameters I'm gonna give you what I've personally seen with my own eyes that I know works okay so and because of that there's a wide variety um, TDS means total dissolved solids that's one of these I have a video on that needs to stay around 220 to 300 I actually have had mine down at 200 for almost a year now um, and then your general hardness 6 to 10 that's because I've seen it go that high and I've you know seen it go that low uh, carbon hardness 4 to 10 so those ranges are, are safe um, you know you may lose a few when you start off but the ones that adjust to whatever parameters you make out of this keep them that way and never change them it has to be consistent especially the ones that are born in there that's what that's the type of environment they were born in so they need that forever so just think about the about those things and just never change it and you have a huge you know so just you know control your general hardness and carbonate hardness and make sure it doesn't change to get it acidic put a piece of wood in there that's what we do we have wood in all our tanks you can buy like shrimp powder that helps with the general hardness and carbon hardness there are natural ways to do this where you don't need to be spending extra money on silly products um, now unless you start wanting to get into caradinas that's a whole nother story do not dive right into caradinas you you will lose the battle start with neos and go from there um, and then oh we also don't even use a heater um, and that's because shrimp slow down so their whole life expectancy temperature controls what kind of life they're gonna have indefinitely and so what happens is if it's really cold the whole time they will slow down their, they'll actually live longer they only have a 12 month lifespan but you can drag it out to two if you keep it cold they can survive in temps from 55 all the way up to 86 and then if you have it above 80s bam they'll they'll live a life in like nine to twelve months die but have a bunch of babies you know so just babies are continually happening but they have really short lifespan so over the past year I let them have it naturally I didn't put I, I had a heater in there and yeah there were babies really fast I pulled it out I let fall and winter and all of that just kind of take place and, and it's perfect for their lifespan they slow down for a bit and kind of enjoy life then they get old have kids then they die because their life is so so short you know that the babies are replacing the parents every year right as they're you know right as they're dying so it's, it's a natural thing you got going on and you don't need to feel bad for any that that die because you know you know that's how long they live live about a year 18 months tops two years if you want to slow everything down but they're gonna stop having babies so um, and then anything else I have to say on the subject uh, females will carry I, had, I wrote some stuff down yes I did because I don't want to forget anything Kendra uh, you're gonna want to give them about at least two months before they even start breeding and uh, they'll carry their eggs on their belly for a month you'll see the female she'll have them on her belly and all of her arms will be rotating them and fanning them that's her cooling them off keeping them oxygenated doing what a mom should do and then after a month she'll let them all go more than likely in the most densely planted area you've got for me we use subwasser tank and then I'll go and poke my subwasser tank and just babies will go pew and then I don't really like freaking out the babies I mean I haven't seen any croak that way but I don't know Alex how would you feel if like the day you were born and just uh. that was like your very first experience that freak you out uh -huh. yeah I guess so uh, and then give them a calcium diet bam I feed them this Sarah of course they eat all the algae your tank will be spotless by the way that's all they do, just, you seen the little pinchers? Yeah, just shoveling food down their mouth. When did they mate? I have no idea. I don't see it happen. I just go down there one day and there's like 50 of them. And I'm like, whoa. So uh, if you have any other further questions, feel free to ask below, Kendra. Thank you for the topic. We do appreciate it. And uh, we hope you're having a good day. If you, oh, there he is eating. Get up and do something. Yeah, do what he said. Get up and do something. Yeah. Thanks again. Catch you next time.